Hi and welcome to this computerarts.co.uk look at what's new in Photoshop CS5. I'm Sam Hampton-Smith and over the next few minutes I'm going to be showing you some of the new features Adobe have just announced. So let's dive straight in and have a look at one of the headline features which is Content Aware Fill. Now there are two ways to access this in Photoshop CS5. The first is using the Spot Healing Brush tool and you need to make sure you've got the Content Aware option chosen in the control panel and then simply click and paint I'm holding down the shift key here just to allow me to draw a straight line and Photoshop does a much much better job with this tool than it ever has done in the past and it will save literally hours of work if you are doing imagery touching it's not perfect but it does a pretty good job good enough that you can rely on it to do the majority of the legwork for you before doing final touch-ups so that's the first version of the content aware fill the second version uses the fill dialog box which you'll find under the edit menu first of all you need to create a loose selection using a marquee tool of some description or a lasso tool and then you need to choose edit fill and in the fill dialog box there's a new option which is content aware click OK and Photoshop will go to work. What it's actually doing here is randomly looking around the image to locate pixels that will work behind the object that you're removing and then once it finds some pixels that will work it uses a proximity search around about those pixels to establish further pixels that will work, reassembles all the patterns and attempts to create a seamless um, new piece of image to slot in place of the pixels that you're removing and you'll see that it does a pretty good job it's it's quite impressive and I'm sure you'll have seen various other demonstrations across the web it really is as good as it looks although it does rely on you having an image that has plenty of source material and sometimes you'll get these artifacts you can still see a faint halo of the head there Adobe have said that it's well worth running this function several times on occasion to get the best results so that you can avoid those sorts of um, ghosting artifacts and so you shouldn't be scared to to go in and apply it a second time and you'll see that again it's done a great job there so that's the content aware fill options which are new to CS5 the next thing I want to show you is just a bit of a time saver really uh, in the past if you've wanted to straighten an image which doesn't have um, a horizontal horizon then you needed to select the ruler tool and draw along the horizon line and then choose image, image rotation and arbitrary and Photoshop was helpfully pre-filling the angle that was required for the rotation in this case 7.9 degrees or 7.84 degrees but there's a new option in Photoshop CS5 it's not a great big feature but it certainly will save a good amount of time and that's the straighten button once you've got the ruler tool active so I've drawn my horizon line there I'm going to click the straighten button and Photoshop automatically straightens uh, and crops so that we have a full image area so that's going to save a little bit of time um, where you're doing a lot of straightening out of images let's move straight along to the next option which is lens correction now lens correction has been available in Photoshop uh, as a filter for quite a while but the new and improved version is available directly under the filter menu you don't have to go into the distort sub menu now and it brings up the dialog box now if your camera outputs EXIF information then Photoshop can automatically read the camera make and model and then subsequently also the lens model and if it's a known combination then Photoshop can actually apply the corrections automatically for you in this particular image I don't have that EXIF information and if that's the case for your particular image then you can go to the custom area and you can apply the distortion um, manually as you always could applying uh, barrel distortion correction up there and keystoning corrections down at the bottom here to correct uh, images where the buildings are appearing to lean and once you're happy with your corrections you can click OK to 
save them. Now, if you are using a camera, make, model, and uh, lens combination that isn't already available as part of the, the, the pre-built combinations, you can save your own lens profiles and upload them and share them online so that there will be an ever-expanding resource of lens and camera combinations available for real hands-off lens corrections. So that's the new and enhanced lens correction options built into Photoshop CS5. Another new option is the brush um, mixer tool, the mixer brush tool, which allows you to see a preview of your brush and also allows you to finally get create some pretty good real media effects directly inside Photoshop. So here I've got a simple uh, bristle brush selected, which is also new to CS5. And I'm going to set it so that the load, the brush load is at the minimum, that's 1%, because I don't actually want to paint with the colors that I've got selected. I'm going to set the mix to 100%, and this is actually a single layer image, but if we have multiple layers, I could choose sample all layers here, and it would pick up the paint from all the different layers and help me mix it together. So I've only got one layer here, and because I'm using the brush with uh, a load of 1% and a mix of 100%, that's going to allow me literally to paint over my image and create a, a real media painting effect. So I go from a photograph to something that looks very much like a painting in several easy strokes of my bristle brush and you'll see that actually it's very effective it, it it creates nice real effects so this is the bristle brush tool which is new to photoshop cs5 along with the mixer brush tool also new to photoshop cs5 and as you can see it allows us to quickly create real media effects and obviously you can save all your own brush presets and load in external brush presets in exactly the same way as you've always been able to and I can see this becoming quite a well used uh, a tool inside Photoshop CS5 uh, it's quite addictive finally something that you'll have heard a lot about no doubt is the repose tool this is 3d for people who don't really understand or need to know about 3d so here I've just brought up the 3d dialogue uh, box and I've got a text layer highlighted I'm going to create a new 3d object a repose object and if I click create it's going to warn me that uh, the text will be rasterized that's fine and you can create a repose object from any layer as long as it's either text or it has a mask uh, the mask will define the faces of the object so again this can take a little while and it's taking a while for me because first of all I'm using a beta version of CS5 here but also uh, because I've got various documents open some of which are quite big so as you can see it's created a 3d version of the text here perfect for creating 3d logos um, there are various presets built in here uh, which allow you to bend around um, objects and as well as the presets you also have full control over the various different extrusions 